Hello and welcome to the 8th lesson of my series Salesforce for Beginners. In this video, we are going to learn about what are workflow rules, how to create a workflow field update and how to create a workflow email alert. This video is the second part of a three-part series on business logic. If you haven't checked out the previous part, the links will be in the description. So let's get started. Before proceeding any further, let's take a recap at the business logic contents. In the previous lessons, we've learned about formula fields and what are validation rules. In this lesson, we'll be learning about workflows. And in the next lesson, we will learn about approval processes. So what is a workflow rule? A workflow or a workflow rule by definition lets you automate standard internal procedures and processes that a user does in your org, which hence also saves time. Few key things to note about a workflow rule is that a workflow rule is a container such that it has two main components, which is a criteria and multiple actions, such that whenever a criteria is satisfied, multiple actions are executed. So basically, a criteria is what must be true on the record for the workflow to execute, and an action is what needs to be done when the record meets a criteria. Now that we know that a workflow consists of two parts, which is criteria and actions, let's understand what are the different types of actions which are available in Salesforce. So there are five actions available, namely new task, field update, email alert, outbound messages, and existing action. In this video, we are only going to learn about the two widely used types, which are field update and email alert. We'll learn about the remaining ones in a later advanced course. Now let's try to understand what is a workflow field update using an example. Let's say we have a use case such that in a school, on creation of a student record, there is a field called status on the student object, which must always be set to in review. So let's say Ms. Teacher is now creating a student record for a student called Kobe, and she does usually fill out a few fields like math marks, science marks, and English marks, but there is a new field called status, which the school administration has instructed Ms. Teacher to always populate with a value. Now this value is supposed to be in review, so she did just that and clicked on the save button. What this does is that it saves the record to the database such that now the Kobe record has status in review. So she did this right as per the instruction. Now for the next record, she's creating a record for Janice and she's populated all the fields right. But for the field called status, she's put a value called reviewed instead of in review and clicked on save. Now this would again successfully save the record, but this time, as per the use case, this record is not the right record, as the status is supposed to be in review, but is reviewed. Now this type of manual errors and repetitive tasks can be avoided when we use a workflow. So let's take the same example, but this time an administrator has created a workflow. So Ms. Teacher, this time when she creates the records, as you can see on the screen, does not populate the values in the status field and clicks on save. Now this would fire a workflow rule with an onCreate criteria and when the records get saved into the system, the workflow will automatically populate the field with the value in review. So as the name states, for a workflow field update, this workflow has updated the field called status. So this allows the teacher to only populate the fields which are relevant to her and the workflow takes care of the internal processes. So now that we know what a workflow field update does, let's get on to the hands-on scenario. So in this scenario, we're going to create a workflow field update such that first we have to do the preparation by creating a picklist field called status on the student object with the picklist values reviewed and in review. And the use case that we're going to implement is when the student record is created, set the status field to in review. So to create a workflow field update, log into your free Salesforce developer account. So I'm currently logged into my Salesforce free developer account and we are first going to do the preparation part of the use case, which is creation of a picklist field on the student object. So click on setup on the top right corner. In the quick find, we're going to type objects. Under create, click on objects. 
In custom objects, I have the student object. Now this is a custom object which I created in one of my previous lessons. So if you want to know the steps to create a custom object, strongly recommend that you check out my previous lessons. So now under custom fields and relationships, click on new. In the new custom field page, we are going to select pick list. Click on next. I'm going to give the field label as status. Select the values as enter values with each value separated by a new line and provide the values here, which is in review and reviewed. I'm going to scroll down, click on next. Provide access to all the profiles, click on next uh, and add it to the student layout. Click on save. There, so the preparation for the use case is done. So let's go and create a first workflow. So in the quick find, type workflows. Under workflow and approvals, we have workflow rules. Click on that. You'll land on a page which has information on what a workflow is. Uh, you can read this or just simply click on continue. Now in the all workflow rules page, click on new rule. We are now going to select the object, which is the student object. So I'll just search for that. It's right here. Click on next. I'm going to give this a rule name. I'm going to type update student on create. Scroll down. Now this is the first part of a workflow rule as we've discussed earlier. So this is the criteria that we're going to define. As of now, evaluate the rule when a record is, uh, we're going to select created. You can also select other options like created every time it's edited or created any time it's edited to subsequently meet the criteria. But as per our use case, we just need it to be created. So uh, also we need to define when exactly does the rule criteria works. You can see that there is a field called run this rule if the in the options you can see criteria is met or formula evaluates to true. If you select criteria is met, you will have to define the criteria using this filter logic fields. Else you can just select formula values to true and then this will give you a page just like the formula field where you can insert a formula. So we're just going to have a simple criteria are met and we're going to select student name not equal to blank, which means that the student name should not be null. Click on save and next. Now this creates the container workflow. Next we have to define the actions. So under add workflow actions, click on this and select new field update. Now under name, just type update status. Now in the field to update, find status and click on status. So now that we've selected status, we need to define what will be the value on the update. So we're going to select in review as that is as per our use case and click on save. There under immediate workflow actions, you can see that there is now an action called field update and the description says update status, which was the name we provided. You can see that we can add more than one action to a workflow, but for now, we're just going to leave it at one. Click on done. There, you've created your first workflow field update. But before you test it out, click on the button Activate. Now this has just checked the active checkbox to check. This means that the workflow is now active. If at some point you do not want to use this workflow or do not want the update to happen, you can always deactivate this. So now let's test the scenario. Click on the Students tab. Now let's click on New to create a new student. So we'll give a student name as Kobe, father name is Matt, a random phone number should do, marks 50, math marks, we can just give it a 60 and status is something that we're going to just leave blank. Now let's click on save. You see that the status has automatically become in review. This was done by the workflow that we just created.
So now that we know what a workflow rule is and the field update action, let's see what an email alert action is. To understand this, we're going to check out this use case where we're going to send a welcome email to the student's parents when the student record is created. So let's say the school is understaffed and Miss Teacher, once she creates the student records, after record creation, she needs to send welcome emails to their individual parents. To do that, Miss Teacher has to write multiple emails to all of the parents and send them. Now this is extremely time consuming. To avoid a situation like this, the administrator can create a workflow such that when the student record is created, a workflow will be fired on the create criteria, which will automatically send emails to the student's parents. This way, the workflow handles the email delivery and Ms. Teacher does not have to worry about it. All she has to do is create the records. Now let's get on to the hands-on scenario. We are now going to create an email alert action inside the workflow rule. To get started with that, we'll have to do the preparation where we create a field on student object called parent email. So the email will be sent to this email ID. And the use case is when the student record is created, send a welcome email to the parent. Please note that before we create the email alert, we first have to create an email template. So for the hands-on scenario, log into your free Salesforce developer account. I'm currently logged into my free Salesforce developer account. On the top right corner, we're going to click on setup. First, we are going to do the preparation part of it, which is creating the field parent email. To do that, we're going to click on quick find and type objects. Click on objects. I'm going to select the custom object student. I'm going to scroll down. In custom fields and relationships, I'm going to click on new. For data type, I'm going to select email. Click on next. Under field label, I'm going to type parents email. Scroll down, click on next. Give access to all the profiles. Click on next. And have it on the student's layout. Click on save. There. We just created the field parent email. The next step right now is to create an email template. To do that, in quick find type email, click on classic email templates under communication templates. Now on this page, you can actually select which folder you want the email template to be in. There is a unified public classic email templates folder. You can create multiple folders, but uh, for now we're just going to have it in this folder itself. Click on new template. There are four types of email templates that you can create, which is text, HTML, custom, and visual force. For now, we're just going to create a text template. We'll create the other templates in development lessons. Scroll down. On the top, you can see something which says that select the field type and uh, a few more fields. This is basically the merge field generator. You can actually pull the fields that you require on the email that comes from the student record and have it pasted on the email body. We'll understand about it in a minute. Scroll down. Let's give an email template name as parent template. You can give the subject here. Welcome to X. Y, Z, let's just say BIT school and the email body you can just type hi let's have the student's name here so on the top select field type as student fields there select the field let's just take father's name instead so now you see there is a copy merge field value field here. So what you're going to do is select the entire thing, just copy it and paste the entire merge field in the email body. There, and click comma, enter, 
what this is going to do is when the email is sent this merge field will be replaced with the father's name let's just type a message okay this looks good uh, let's just click on save but before that click on available for use any template which has this checkbox unchecked will not be available for use click on save there we've just created the email template and here's a preview now let's create an email alert to do so in the quick find type workflow select workflow rules scroll down click on continue now as per the use case the workflow should fire on creation we already have a workflow rule so we can just create another action on the workflow that we previously created so let's just do that so click on the workflow rule you can see there is workflow actions so what we need to do is just add an action we don't really have to create a same workflow again in case the rule criteria was to be changed also if it were to fire on maybe say update then we could have just created another workflow but let's just continue with this one now so click on edit under add workflow actions click on new email alert in description I'm going to type parent email notification then we have the email alert that we need to select so click on the lookup you can type the name of the template here which is parent template select parent template you just selected the email template scroll down now what is the type of the recipient so let this be as an email field and you can select the email field which is available on the object which is parent email and click on this add button this is a multi select option where you can have multiple recipients but for now it's only going to go to the parent email you can skip the additional emails and who is going to be the sender is it the current user we're just going to leave it at that click on save there we just created the email alert just click on done so now the email alert and the workflow is ready to use so let's do a quick test go to the students tab click on students click on new let me create a student let's say ksi father's name ksi senior random number marks this is a wrong entry so let's just say 100 then status is something we'll leave it blank and we need to provide an email address okay so this looks fine click on save so the record is created we now have to check if we've received any email so in my email i can check that there is a new email which says hi ksi senior and there is a welcome message right here there we've successfully sent an email alert so that's it for today's video if you like the video press on that like button comment and share the video and subscribe to my channel begin it also like us on facebook and visit our blog on wordpress so this is devji chaudhary and i'll see you next time